Hey, do you know that every time you get a 1-Up Mushroom in Super Mario, it's not an extra life, but it's actually a battery used to fuel the creation of more Mario and Luigi clones? Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and today I'm going to make Mario and Luigi floating in their cloning vats. First thing first though, I'm going to need a bunch of clay. I'm going to start out with Mario because despite all his claims to the contrary, Luigi is not number one, and I'll get him going by rolling out a ball of red clay, then sticking a couple wormy dealies to the side for his arms. Now I'm making both Mario and Luigi out of color clay in an effort to cut down on the time it takes to make these cloning vats, and because they'll be floating in resin, I want to make them without any armatures. So anytime I finish a major section of the body, I'm going to bake it before moving on to the next body part. So with that in mind, once his torso and arms are done, I'll bake them before moving on to his head. One of the benefits of making clones is that they'll be suspended in the cloning vat's sleep, which means I don't need to make eyeballs since their eyes are closed, so I only need to make the eyelids. These started out as single flattened pills that get cut in half and then stuck in place, which will help frame the face so that I can start adding the rest of the details. Now I didn't plan for this video to be a ghoulish nightmare like a few of my other videos have been, but due to the nature of the sculpting process, you're gonna have to stare at a noseless, earless, hairless head for a lot longer than I intended. In fact, even with his nose in place, it still manages to dip into that uncanny valley of being almost something you recognize, but it still triggers the monkey part of your brain that tells you something's not quite right. Now with his head in place, I'll give him an extra deep scalping so I can fit his hat on top and then give it a bit of shape before adding the brim. At this point, I'm also going to take a minute to brush the surface with some isopropyl alcohol which will help remove some of the surface dirt and give his skin a more uniform color before adding his ears and getting to work on his facial hair. Now his hair is a darker shade of brown than my clay comes in, but that's easy enough to fix by smooshing a bit of black into it. And with my Mario and Luigi mustache brown mixed up, I can start adding the teeny tiny facial hair details, which means this creepy, bald, kind of sweaty looking plumber is finally starting to look a little bit more recognizable. Otherwise, once I finish his facial hair, I can give him another bake in the oven before getting to work adding the rest of his flowing mane and his beautiful sideburns. In the not too distant past, I made a creepy Lego man who was wearing blue jeans, which means I have a little bit of blue jean blue clay left over, which will be a perfect color for a pair of Italian plumber's pants. I'll squish a little ball of clay onto the bottom half, and then gently prod and poke it until it's in the shape of my overalls. I also decided he needed a bit more girth to his paunch, so I'll thicken up his midsection before smoothing it all out, and then sticking some big meaty sausage legs onto his bottom half. Then I'll blend these into his upper torso, give him a little crick in the back of his knees, then bend the legs so that they're in a bit more of a floating suspended in cloning vat goo appearance, before using my ball stylus to round out the bottom of his jeans so I can add some potatoes later. Now his white gloved hands will be made out of this white glove colored clay, which I'll pinch a tiny hand sized amount off, and then stick it in place onto the nubs of his arms. Then I can cut out some teeny tiny fingers, give them a bit of shape, then add a thumb, and finally some white wormy dealy cuffs. Now while I've got the white clay out, I'll also take a second to add the base for his hat patch, then add some little golden buttons to help suspend his suspenders. Finally, the aforementioned baked potatoes can get attached to the bottom of his jeans, and a couple of teeny tiny blue wormy dealies will help to blend them in which means all that's left to do is paint the patented M patch on his hat, and then we can set him aside and get to work on his taller, handsomer, greener brother. Luigi will follow an almost identical process for creation, but with a few teeny tiny changes that make a world of difference. For instance, did you know that while Mario is wearing a red shirt, Luigi is often seen wearing a green shirt? That's just a quick pro tip for you to help quickly differentiate between the two of them. Unfortunately, Luigi is also a bit more depressed, hence why he has such a long face. He's also a little bit taller and a little bit skinnier, and he has a propensity for ghost hunting that his older brother does not. Otherwise, the only real noticeable difference is that he tends to style his mustache in a more traditional chunky handlebar style, whereas Mario tends towards the six-pointed flavor saver. 
If all else fails though and you're still having the darndest time telling them apart, it's really only a matter of time before one or the other will shout their name at you for what seems like the most arbitrary reasons. At this point, Luigi's top half is looking pretty well finished and all I need to do is add his pants, which in hindsight should have been a slightly darker shade of blue, but they're not because I forgot to until right now while I'm editing this video. Otherwise, it's all the same as before. A pair of white gloved hands with itty bitty fingers and white cuffs, a white patch for his hat, some golden suspender buttons, a couple of baked potato pant ends covered in blue wormy dealies, and finally a fancy painted L. And that means both brothers are finished and ready for their cloning vats. I've mounted both Mario and Luigi on little acrylic rods which should be mostly hidden when I pour the resin in and then a couple dabs of UV resin will keep them upright while the slow cure resin is curing slowly. The vats themselves will be made out of a single acrylic tube that I've cut in half to make two equally sized perfectly round lengths of cloning vat which can be placed over the bros and then sealed with hot glue to prepare for the resin. I'm going to tint the resin with just a teeny tiny bit of blue so that it's sort of somewhat tinted without any lights, but not tinted enough to distort the color of my characters at all. Then it's just a case of pouring the resin into the tubes and waiting patiently for 72 hours until the resin has fully cured. Rather than just sit and watch this resin cure, however, I figure I can get to work making the rest of the cloning vat. Now a smart man would have left a little bit of tubing free so that he could use it to accurately size the rest of the sculpture but instead of doing that, I didn't do that. Fortunately, I happen to have a metal cup that I use to hold paintbrushes, and it's nearly the perfect size. I need something that's the correct size because I need something that I can wrap a layer of clay sushi around so that my acrylic tube will sit comfortably inside with space for LEDs and lighting and whatever wiring I might need. And of course, the fact that I can bake this cup in the oven is even better. So once I've made my gray clay tube, I'll cut it in half and bake it before popping off the metal cup and cutting the tip off the clay tube so that I have a smaller section, which will be the top of the vat. Of course, this left some pretty gnarly cuts, so we'll need a quick ASMR break before moving on. With some adequately smooth edges, it's just a case of building up the bottom section by adding random strips of clay and poking all sorts of holes and details, and basically covering every square inch in some form of fancy clay greebly. Now the top of the vat is a little different since it's the top and it needs to be covered. I mean the last thing you want is dirt and bugs accidentally falling into your cloning chamber, so I've rolled out a sheet of clay and attached it to the top side of the ring. Now as I mentioned at the start of the video, these cloning vats are powered by the delicious juices of the green 1-Up mushroom, so I'll make a little dirty patch that will go on top and house my future mushrooms. A little ball of aluminium foil rolled up and aggressively pressed into the clay will add some dirty detail, then I can add a flat worm of clay around the perimeter of the mushroom garden before poking some mushroom divots into the top. I'll build the mushrooms from the ground up by pressing various sizes of clay blobs into place in the divots, leaving the larger of them in the center. Then I'll add a little bit of texture to the stalks before making some beautiful mushroom caps to fit onto each of them. Finally, with the mushrooms in place, I'll add a bunch of random greeblies around the perimeter of the lid so that it matches the look of the bottom. Then with everything else in place, I'll go back and add a bunch of strategically placed wormy dealy tubes. Now I'll also do the same thing to the bottom section, adding lots of fun and exciting science tubes, but I won't record it because I'll forget to press the record button. I'll also build a little bit of a lip around the inside to support the tubes and to keep it from sitting too low in the base. Otherwise, the two sections of the vat are finished and it's ready for a quick priming. Oh, and of course I made a second pair because, you know, there's two Mario Brothers. 
Now I figured if I'm going to be making the cloning vats big tubes, then it would simply be ridiculous for them to not be green. I do, however, want them to be metallic, so I mixed a little green paint in with some gunmetal paint, which gave me this really great looking metallic green finish. Then after just a few coats, I'm left with a nice uniform base coat covering all the metal sections, and I can start working my way through the details, starting large and working to the small. The dirt will be painted so it looks like dirt, then I can paint the stalks of the mushrooms with a bone white, followed by a series of greens for the mushroom caps. Once the dirt had dried, I went back over it with an umber ink wash to highlight all the aluminium foil texture before giving all the mushroom caps the requisite white dots. I'll then swap between the top and the bottom parts, painting some of the larger sections with a darker untinted gunmetal gray before adding some smaller highlights with a lighter silver. I'll mix a bit of red into the silver to give it a metallic red highlight that gets added here and there for a bit of extra color before painting the tubes with some brighter yellows, reds, and blues. Finally, to tone all the bright colors down and give the entire vat a bit of shading and a grimier look, I'll give the entire surface a heavy coating of very thinned out black wash. Because this is so thin, it'll flow easily into the nooks and crannies, adding easy shading, but it shouldn't pull on any of the flat surfaces. It'll also help to mute some of the brighter colors and make it look a little more cohesive. Once that had dried, I realized I forgot to add the eyes to the mushrooms, so I'll go ahead and do that before adding a last little wash of rusty brown around some of the gunmetal parts to make it look nice and dirty. Otherwise, that's the vats done, so all I need to do is add some lights. These are my teeny tiny studio lights that I'll use if I want to add a bit of color to my glamour shots and they're perfect because they're directional but soft and small but battery operated so they should be just about the perfect size. Now to make them fit the model but be removable so I can continue to use them I'll make a little foam frame so that they can sit comfortably inside. Originally I'd planned on building these vats with non-removable LED strips, but because I had future plans for these, I wanted something that would be removable in case I decided to go in a different direction later. This way I can make a little base complete with lighting, but I can still take everything apart if I need to. Of course, I don't want to just sit the vat on top of the light, so I'll attach the frame to a thin sheet of foam, then cut it so it sits flush to the sides. Then I'll use the Miracle Metal Cup to mark out a hole for the light to shine through, find the center of the base using the old corner to corner trick, and then disregard the hole I traced using the cup and just use the circle cutter instead. And I also added a little sheet onto the front to cover the hole and then I filled the gaps using gap filler. Some simple straight lines across the top will give me a nice tiled look and I can seal the foam by giving it a base coat of black Mod Podge. Followed by a coat of stone grey, and then a final coat of black wash. Otherwise my base is done and it's time to check in on our clone bros. Now in what may be a first for the channel, the resin has cured beautifully and without spilling everywhere, so I'll use a little isopropyl alcohol to help remove the last of the hot glue and I'm ready to start putting it all together. As I said before, I'm not going to glue anything together because I want to be able to take this all apart. However, to help blend the vat in the floor, I'll use a bit more of the rusty wash around the tiles at the base of the vat. Otherwise, everything else should fit nice and neatly together, so it's just a case of putting it all in place. So with the lights fully charged and in place, we're onto the glamour shots.
As always, a huge thank you to the beautiful people of Patreon that continue to feed me while I make whatever weird thing comes to my mind every week, and a very special thank you to the newest of my patrons, Celeste D. Harrison, Guardian of Light Zach H., Seanimals, Nicole Porter, Glennie S., Carlos Rivas, Erwin von Lesenhorst, Lismar Colon, Trilinguist, Hiram Shade Armenta, Finn Valley, Philo, Mista, Corinne Romano, Amy Abbott, Rotten Inc., Splix X, Alyssa Sprague, Helen Marino, Price McIntyre, Alice Alvarez, Abby Perkis, Maria Perella, Emma M., Kanlisha, Hannah Hanashiro, Spelling Error, Minty Ace, Edward Kretsch, Oliver Bauer, Funkily, Sam Kinsey, Biebs, Charles the Bunny, Scott M. Johnson, Exotic Exploring, Cajo Norpa, and Abian Laurel. You are the crystal clear life-giving liquid that keeps my many clones working around the clock each week to make these videos. If you like this video, then don't forget to do something. I don't know. I can't remember. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.